When you create a button design in Build a Button, you'll typically use a variety of different objects. Here, for example, I have an image as well as a shape and some text. Each of those objects is represented by a layer, and you can manage those layers on the Layers panel. At the moment I have the Layers panel collapsed, you can expand or collapse the Layers panel by clicking the arrow up at the top right. You can even move this Layers panel around if needed, just by dragging on the header for the Layers panel. And then on the Layers panel, you'll see the various layers, and you can work with these layers in a variety of different ways. First, of course, we might need to select a layer from time to time, and we can do so by clicking on the layer itself on the Layers panel, or by clicking within our button design, so clicking on the image layer, for example. With a layer active, we can move that layer either by simply dragging it around within our button design, or by using the arrow keys on the keyboard to nudge the layer into just the right position. Each layer will have a name based on the type of layer that it is, but you can also rename the layer. So here, for example, I have a shape layer, which happens to be a circle, but I can double-click on the name of the layer. So here I'll just call this circle, for example, by typing circle and pressing enter or return on the keyboard in order to apply that change. We can also change the order of the layers. So here, for example, I have my circle layer above my text layer, and that's causing the circle to partially block the text. So I can click on the arrows icon here and then drag the curved text layer upward or downward as needed. I can also move a layer up or down using buttons on the toolbar. So I've selected the circle layer and then I can click the layer up button in order to move that layer up on the layer stack or the layer down button in order to move that layer down. I can also hide a layer by adjusting its visibility. And so, for example, if I'd like to hide the circle layer, I can click the eye icon associated with that layer, and that will turn off the visibility of that layer, and then I can click again to turn it back on. There's also a locking feature, which can be especially helpful when you're trying to select a particular layer. So, for example, if I want to make sure that I'm selecting the text layer rather than the circle layer, I can lock the shape layer, the circle layer, so that it won't be selectable. So I'll go ahead and lock that circle layer, and now when I click in the area where the text and circle are both found, I'll only get the text selected rather than the circle. And if I were to select the circle layer and then try to move it around, you'll see that I'm not actually moving the circle layer, I'm moving whichever other layer would be underneath it. So in this case, the image layer. Note, by the way, that in addition to the name of the layer, there's also an icon that indicates the layer type. So an image type versus a shape versus text, for example. We can also duplicate a layer. And so, for example, in this case, my image doesn't quite fill the entire area of the button, but I don't want to enlarge it because then I wouldn't be able to fit the full shape, the stack of rocks here. And so instead, I might duplicate this image layer and then blur it and enlarge it. So with the image layer active, I'll go up onto the toolbar, and then I'll click the copy button, followed by the paste button. And that will copy and paste so that now I have a new image layer, a copy of the layer that had been selected. I'll go ahead and enlarge that image so that it fills the entire button area. And then I'll go to the filters button over on the left panel for that image layer. And then I'll increase the value for blur, right about like that looks pretty good. And of course, in this case, I also need to change the layer order. So I'll drag that blurred image layer down to the very bottom of the stack. And it's also possible to delete a layer. So perhaps I'll make a copy of my shape layer here, for example, but then decide that I don't actually need that particular shape. Then I can select that layer and then click the delete button, the trash can icon, on the Layers panel. You'll see a confirmation dialog, so you can simply click the Delete button in order to actually delete that unneeded layer. So as you can see, there are a variety of ways that you can work with your layers, managing the various layers that you've created as part of a button design.